Do you rely on electricity like you do food and water? What would life be like without electricity to power your favorite video games, television shows, telephones, and even the lights you read by at night? Just think, without electricity, you wouldn't be able to enjoy your daily routine. What a horrible thought. But don't worry. Electricity does exist. And it allows us to enjoy life in so many ways. Since electricity is a natural force that exists in our world, it didn't have to be invented. It did, however, had to be discovered and understood. Most people give credit to Benjamin Franklin for discovering electricity. Benjamin Franklin had one of the greatest scientific minds of his time. He was interested in many areas of science, made many discoveries, and invented many things, including bifocal glasses. In the mid-1700s, he became interested in electricity. He came up with the idea that electricity had positive and negative elements and that electricity flowed between these elements. He also believed that lightning was a form of this flowing electricity. And in 1752, Franklin conducted his famous kite experiment. In order to show that lightning was electricity, he flew a kite during a thunderstorm. He tied a metal key to the kite string to conduct the electricity. Just as he thought, electricity from the storm clouds transferred to the kite and electricity flowed down the string and gave him a shock. He's lucky that he didn't get hurt, but he didn't mind the shock since it proved his idea. Building upon Franklin's work, many other scientists studied electricity and began to understand more about how it works. Archaeologists and scientists have found evidence that ancient people may have experimented with electricity, too. In 1936, a clay pot was discovered that suggests that the first batteries may have been invented over 2,000 years ago. The clay pot contained copper plates, tin alloy, and an iron rod. It could have been used to create an electric current by filling it with an acidic solution, like vinegar. No one knows what the device was used for, but it sheds some light on the fact that people may have been learning about electricity long before Benjamin Franklin. Amongst the long list of visionaries and scientists, through the history of inventions within electricity, were Luigi Galvani, who demonstrated what we now understand to be the electrical basis of nerve impulses, which provided the cornerstone of research for later inventors like Volta to create batteries. Alessandro Volta, who invented the voltaic pile and discovered the first practical method of generating electricity. Alessandro Volta was born in Como, Lombardy, Italy, on February 18, 1745. His family was part of the nobility, but not wealthy. Until the age of four, he showed no signs of talking, and his family feared he was not very intelligent or possibly dumb. Fortunately, their fears were misplaced later on. His father died leaving unpaid debts when Alessandro was seven. The young Alessandro was educated at home by his uncle until he was 12 years old. He then started studies at a Jesuit boarding school. The Jesuit school charged no fees, but pressurized him to become a priest. His family did not want this, and withdrew him from the school after four years. Volta then studied at the Benzi Seminary until reaching 18 years of age. Volta had his own ideas. He was interested in the world around him, he wanted to be a scientist. Although as a child, he had been slow to speak Italian. Gradually, Volta now seemed to have a special talent for languages. Before he left school, he had learned Latin, French, English, and German. His language talents helped him in later life when he traveled with the aim of discussing his work with scientists in Europe's centers of science. Aged 18, Volta was bold enough to begin an exchange of letters about electricity with two leading physicists, Jean-Antoine Nollet in Paris and Jean-Baptiste Beccaria in Turin. Beccaria did not like some of Volta's ideas and encouraged him to learn more by doing experiments. When he wrote his first dissertation, Volta addressed it and dedicated it to Beccaria. His wealthy friend Giulio Cesare Gattini had built a physics laboratory in his home, and for several years he kindly allowed Volta to do experiments in this laboratory. 
Volta wrote his first scientific paper in 1765, which he addressed to Gian Battista Beccaria, about static electricity generated by rubbing different substances together, i.e. triboelectricity. In 1769, Volta published a dissertation titled On the Attractive Force of the Electric Fire, and on the phenomena dependent on it, which he sent to Beccaria. He discussed his ideas on the causes of electrical attraction and repulsion and compared these with gravity. He set out his position that, like gravity, static electricity involved action at a distance. The main scientists influencing his thinking were Isaac Newton, Roger Boscovich, Benjamin Franklin and Jean Battista Beccaria himself. During 1771, Volta read Joseph Priestley's 1767 review of scientific research on electricity. He learned that some discoveries he had made recently had already been made by others. So, in the year 1775, Volta wrote a letter to Joseph Priestley, explaining how he had invented a device that produced static electricity, the electricity could be transferred to other objects. We call this device the electrophorus. Volta wanted to know if the device was a new invention. Priestley told him Johann Wilk had invented such a device in 1762, but Volta had invented it independently. Priestley encouraged Volta to keep up his interesting research work. Subsequently, in 1776, Aged 31, Volta was the first person to isolate methane gas. He discovered that, a methane air mixture could be exploded in a closed container with an electric spark. An electrically started chemical reaction like this would later be the basis of the internal combustion engine. In 1776, Volta suggested that the sparking apparatus he used to explode methane could also be used to send an electric signal along a wire from Como to the city of Milan. In, 1777, Volta invented a much better udiometer than any that had gone before. Volta's udiometer was superior to others because it used hydrogen as the gas reacting with oxygen, giving a clean, reliable reaction. The reaction was also cleanly started using an electric spark. The udiometer worked on the basis that the volume of hydrogen gas in it decreased after sparking because the hydrogen reacted with oxygen gas to make water. The decrease in volume was proportional to the amount of oxygen present in the air. Between the years 1777 and 1778, Volta set out on a scientific journey to Switzerland and France. He met other scientists and showed them his innovations in electrical equipment. He also traveled with the purpose of making his name better known outside Italy. Volta was appointed to the Chair of Experimental Physics at the University of Pavia, about 55 miles 85 kilometers, from Como, a position he would hold for over 40 years. While experimenting in the university's laboratory, Volta discovered that the electrical potential, we now often call this the voltage, in a capacitor is directly proportional to electrical charge. From 1781 to 1782, Volta continued travel around most of Europe's major scientific centers, including the French Academy in Paris, demonstrating his electrical equipment and inventions to eminent people such as Antoine Lavoisier and Benjamin Franklin. Volta was beginning to become well-known outside Italy. In 1782, Volta wrote about the condenser he had constructed, today we would call it a capacitor, to collect and store electric charge, and how he had used it to study a variety of electrical phenomena. Continuing with his experiments, from 1788 to 1790, Volta built increasingly sensitive electroscopes to detect and measure the effects of electric charge and Volta carried out experiments on the behavior of gases. He found an accurate value for air's increasing volume with rising temperature. In 1791, recognizing that he had become one of Europe's foremost electrical scientists, Volta was elected to be a Fellow of the Royal Society of London. And three years later in 1794, at the age of 50, Volta was awarded the Royal Society's top prize, the Copley Medal, for his contributions to scientific understanding of electricity. The battery, Volta invented gave chemists a very powerful new method to study substances. The beauty of his device was that almost anyone could make one. Silver and copper coins were available to many people, as were other metals such as iron, tin and zinc. Within weeks of Volta's invention of the battery, William Nicholson and Anthony Carlyle built and used a battery to decompose water into hydrogen and oxygen. Within just six years, Humphrey Davy had built a powerful battery. 
With it, he isolated new chemical elements, and deduced that chemical bonds were electrical in nature. Davy's discoveries of the new elements barium, calcium, lithium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and strontium, were all made possible by Volta's invention of the battery. Without Volta's invention, there could be no modern technology. Volta's battery was an absolutely crucial invention in the development of our technology-based civilization. During the end. In 1819, at the age of 74, Volta decided it was time to hang up his capacitors, his voltaic piles, his electrophorus, and his administrative work at the university. He retired to a country house close to his hometown of Como, where he could spend more time with his wife, Maria Teresa. They had three sons, Zanino, Faminio and Luigi. Volta lived in Como until his death, aged 82, on March 5, 1827. In 1881, scientists decided that the unit of electric potential would be called the volt to recognize Volta's great contributions to electrical science.